Peace be with you. Um, I've been a Marylander for eight years now. I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee, and I came to Baltimore as part of the Episcopal Service Corps, a program I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Suffice it to say, the transition from Memphis to Baltimore, or as my friends called it, uh, the transition from the first 48 to the wire <laughs> uh, was interesting. Um, our first Sunday settled in, uh, we attended service at St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Pikesville, Maryland. Now, in the Pentecostal tradition I grew up in, uh, service started on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. with Sunday school. And by the time the pastor preached, the choir sang, the offering was made, and the announcements uh, were done, you'd feel fortunate to be leaving church by 2 p.m. Very, very fortunate. So going to St. Mark's and, and being out of service in an hour literally left me asking out loud, that's it? <laughs> Um, but the part that stuck with me the most was the peace, uh, the intentionality in greeting congregants and perfect strangers with a handshake or with a hug and sharing peace with them. Peace be with you, Jesus said. As Jesus spoke, he Seems Kaziah is having connectivity issues. Hopefully she'll be able to rejoin us. I want to say that, um, that we can just sit for a moment with this discomfort. And if she's not joined us in a bit, then Glenna, perhaps you'd like to. She's back. She does not appear to do that. So sorry about that. Can you all hear and see me? Yes. Okay. Awesome. We will do, my friend, uh, after we exchange the piece. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so the piece is something that will stay with me forever. I always thought it was such a beautiful thing and to see it so consistently whenever I visited um, an Episcopal church. So our scripture today is coming from uh, John chapter 20, verse 19 through 23. And the scripture says, that Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you. Jesus said. As Jesus spoke, Jesus showed them the wounds uh, and hands and side, and they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As God has sent me, so I am sending you. Then Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now this was right after uh, the empty tomb was discovered and a resurrected Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene and instructed her to let the disciples know. When Jesus privately uh, appeared to the disciples and greeted them in peace, they still didn't either know or believe or realize that it was Jesus who was standing before them until Jesus showed them the wounds. Then they rejoiced and they received Jesus' peace again. Um, the year 2020 has been an interesting year so far. And by interesting, let's be honest, I mean awful. Uh, unfortunately, profiling, racism, police brutality, and injustice are actually wearing N95 masks and are consistent enough to be able to navigate through a global pandemic and prove that old habits, systems, infrastructure, mindsets, and ideals die hard. Right now, as I speak, the smoke is clearing from buildings that were ablaze. Streets are littered with face masks, gloves, debris, remnants of protest, unrest, and revolution in just about every major city in the country. 
proof that no matter how many disagree, Black Lives Matter. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Sean Reed, Ahmaud Aubrey, Nina Pop, Tony McDade, their lives mattered. A few white colleagues and associates have reached out to me asking how to be an ally, how to follow Micah 6 and 8 and do what God requires from us, which is to do what is right and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. Or like Hebrews 12 and 14 instructs to follow peace with everyone. We've subscribed to the belief that peace means quiet or civility. I submit to you that peace is no monolith. It is multifaceted, it is layered, and it is heavily nuanced. In times like these, peace is solidarity. Peace is standing with your Black brothers, sisters, family members, friends, and colleagues by listening, by holding space, by donating to bailouts and justice funds, and by publicly speaking out against injustice. Black people are literally risking their lives to protest, to demonstrate, to breathe. Diversity brings even more power to these outcries. You see our wounds. We have shown you our wounds, our proof that we are exhausted, that we are grieving, and that we are crying. Your proof is in the peace, the peace of solidarity, the peace of holding space, the peace of walking alongside us, the peace of allyship. Peace be with you. Peace be with me. Peace be with us. Black Lives Matter. I have a poem that I wrote and I would love to uh, share it with you all. It's a poem that I shared right after, uh, not very long after George Floyd was killed. Um, and, and things started spreading and videos started kind of going around the internet and spreading uh, and people were seeing what was going on. Um, the protests began. I wrote uh, this poem. Mm. What an interesting narrative. Our prayers have shifted from thank you for blessings, Lord to thank you for sparing us. Skittles and sweet tea mixed blood with rainbows. It didn't change the color of the victim, but Fox News sure changed the color of his character. All lives matter, huh? Seems like ever since we said black lives matter, we've lost count on how many cc's of black blood has splattered from bodies that look like mine. Bodies with music too loud, bodies that's jogging around, bodies that's rolled up in mats, bodies driving home from practice, bodies gathered to study the word, bodies that just got off work, bodies that's just getting home, bodies playing games with her son, bodies that's leaving the party, bodies that's holding a gun, probably, that kid probably, he probably just had a gun. Eight years after Trayvon, the same conversation goes on as these Black parents hug these Black bodies tighter and tighter. This feels less like life and more like plight. And the graduating class of murderers gets wider and wider. Portrait to panoramic. Families are in a panic. It used to be just get a degree. Now it's make it past 23, or better yet, 25. And, and don't run any errands at night. If, if you get pulled over, just comply. If you get pulled over, go on Facebook Live. Wear glasses to make sure you look nice. You'll lower your threat level if you smile. Use your corporate voice when you reply. Take the fear out of your eyes. Don't have your music volume too high. Just please, just please be wise. Please, whatever it takes, make it home to your family tonight. You can't 
be surprised that we're tired or misunderstand why we need a little time. It feels like we never stop grieving. Our hearts skip beats when one of us stops breathing. Justice ain't never been found in anybody administratively leaving. Thank you, the word of the Lord.